This video is sponsored by NordVPN. In the summer of 1943, the Germans captured dozens of Soviet prisoners of war during the Battle of Smolensk. However, one of them stood out. It was Yakov Jugashvili, the eldest son of Joseph Stalin. Stalin's first son was born to the dictator's first wife and only love, Kato Svanidze. When she passed, her husband was devastated and abandoned their son with his wife's relatives. He would be hard on the boy from then on, even refusing to give him the name Stalin. When World War II broke out, Yakov had become a man and served his country as an artillery officer. But in an unfortunate turn of events, he was seized by the enemy and turned in by his own people. The Nazis would exploit his image in propaganda strategies and even tried to swap him for a German prisoner in the custody of the Soviets. However, they did not realize one key detail. Joseph Stalin was no family man. Did you know that content from streaming services differ from country to country? Don't be a prisoner, locked into only the content offered in your location. To unlock the full potential of all your streaming services, use NordVPN. With NordVPN and their user-friendly software, you can switch your IP address to a location anywhere in the world and watch content you wouldn't be able to find with only your internet browser. Enjoy endless country-tailored entertainment at a fraction of the price. The folks at NordVPN are on a journey to make the internet a safer place for their customers. By protecting your IP address, you also protect your online identity. Right now, Dark Docs viewers can take advantage of a holiday promotion and get a huge discount on a two-year plan, plus an additional month for free. To redeem this incredible offer and obtain all the benefits the best VPN service on the market has to offer, go to nordvpn.com slash darkdocs or click the link in the description below. Young Love Ekaterina Kato Svanidze was born in 1885 in the small Georgian village of Russia, then part of the Kutaisi governorate within the Russian Empire. Kato had two elder sisters, Sashiko and Mariko, and a younger brother, Alyosha. The four siblings moved and lived together in Tiflis, where they got a house behind the South Caucasus military district headquarters. Kato's brother was a member of the Bolsheviks, the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party in Georgia, and was also a confidant of Yosef Jugashvili, a young and astute man who would go on to become Joseph Stalin. Meanwhile, the Svenidze sisters took up a job at an atelier working for a French seamstress, Madame Hervieux. Their lives would become entangled with politics, for they fashioned uniforms and dresses for military officers and their wives. But Kato's life changed when her brother invited Jugashvili to live with them in 1905, as the atelier would be a perfect hideout for their secretive activities. Frequented by the sisters' distinguished clientele and at a central location, the place provided an ideal facade. Thus, while the ladies fitted the general's wives in exquisite gowns in one room, the gentlemen carried out their illegal labors in the other. The young Jugashvili soon fell for Kato's charms. In his own words, she was, quote, very sweet and beautiful. She melted my heart. Meanwhile, Kato was fascinated by his intelligence and even worshipped him like a demigod. In the summer of 1906, the couple decided to marry. She was newly pregnant, but it's not clear whether they knew of this by then. Still, devout as she was, Kato insisted on a religious wedding, to which Jugashvili, a rigid atheist, surprisingly accepted. The couple finally wed in a secret ceremony on July 16, 1906, at 2 a.m. Finding a priest had been a problematic endeavor, as the groom was using false documents and identities at the time. From then on, Kato protected her husband's identity with her life. She also helped the Bolsheviks, even going to prison for six weeks for hosting a contact from Moscow who turned out to be a double agent. However, she was soon released due to her advanced pregnancy. In March of 1907, Kato gave birth to a son whom they named Yakov. Despite the demands of his job, Jugashvili would usually play with his child and call him Patsan or Laddy. However, a few months later, he got involved in a high-profile bank robbery and the family had to flee. They moved to Baku to avoid arrest, and Kato was often alone at home. Her husband was frequently away, which kept her under constant stress. Plus, the harsh weather conditions took a toll on her health. She eventually fell ill and was forced to move back with her family, contracting typhus on the journey. Kato died three weeks after arriving with her relatives. It is said that her husband was devastated and that his guns were taken away from him. During the burial, he threw himself into her grave and was dragged out, eventually running away when he learned Okrana agents had trailed him. 
Jugashvili abandoned his eight-month-old son to Kato's family, and his wife's passing ultimately proved a turning point in his life. He would later say, quote, This creature softened my heart of stone. She died, and with her died my last warm feelings for humanity. Father and Son Yakov spent the first 14 years of his life with his mother's family. Then, in 1921, he was brought to Moscow to live with his father. The change proved a rough time for the teenager, as his native tongue was Georgian, not Russian. In addition, it's believed that Yakov reminded Stalin of his beloved late wife and happier times, so he was hostile to him and even forbade him to adopt the name Stalin. The young Yakov was also forced to sleep in the dining room at the amusement palace in the Kremlin. Shortly after his arrival, Yakov's two half-siblings were born. He was close to both Vasily and Svetlana, as well as to his stepmother, Nadezhda Aleluyeva, barely six years older than him. By 1928, Yakov intended to marry the daughter of an Orthodox priest, Zoya Gunina. Stalin was enraged and opposed the idea. The deeply hurt young man attempted to take his own life by shooting himself in the chest, but he survived as the bullet narrowly missed his heart. After recovering, the couple married and had a daughter in 1929, but the infant died shortly after. The marriage then crumbled, and they separated. Then, roughly a decade later, he would remarry to Yulia Meltzer, a famous Jewish dancer. Initially, Stalin would not allow his eldest son to study at a university. But by the age of 23, he was finally admitted and became an engineer. He then worked as a chimney sweep engineer at an electric plant for a couple years, and then entered the artillery academy, from which he graduated just in time to join the war. In the hands of the enemy. After the Nazis launched Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, Stalin ensured that Yakov and his adopted son, Artyom Sergeyev, went to the front lines. Yakov would serve as a lieutenant in the 14th Howitzer Regiment of the 14th Tank Division. On July 16th, near Vitebsk, Belarus, Yakov was either captured or surrendered to the Germans during the Battle of Smolensk. Sergeyev recalled, quote, The Germans surrounded Yakov's battery. The order was given to retreat but Yakov did not obey the order. I tried to persuade him, but Yakov answered, I am the son of Stalin, and I do not permit the battery to retreat. The lieutenant then dumped his insignia and sought to blend in with the masses of captives. Unfortunately, he was recognized by one of his former comrades, who didn't hesitate to turn him into the Germans. Some Soviet prisoners, Russian muzhiks, confirmed they had readily turned in Stalin's son to the Germans as they hated the Soviet system but other sources, such as Russian archives, suggest he might have surrendered willingly. The Abwehr's most trained Russian experts then interrogated the invaluable prisoner, and all his words were carefully recorded. However, only a part of those documents is available to the public. What is certain is that the artillery officer would not belittle himself in front of his captors. But cornered as he was, he yielded after a while. When he was questioned about his family, it became apparent how loose his bond was with his father. His opinion of his own division was low, and even more so of the Red Army, which he deemed unprepared for the war. Yakov disclosed to the Germans that commanders often misbehave during peacetime and even during combat. Furthermore, Yakov explained how the Kulaks, rich peasants who had protected Tsarism and the bourgeois class, controlled the Soviet system. Nazi propaganda profited greatly from the capture, and they showered Soviet trenches with leaflets, promising good treatment for those who surrendered, except commissars and Jews. The pamphlets featured a photograph of Yakov Drugashvili, smiling and surrounded by Wehrmacht officers. No deal. A letter was eventually sent to the Soviet premier through diplomatic channels. It read, quote, Dear Father, I have been taken prisoner. I am in good health. I will soon be sent to a camp for officers in Germany. I am being treated well. I wish you good health. Greetings to everyone. Yasha. After receiving news from the Germans about his son's capture, Stalin complained, quote, The fool. He couldn't even shoot himself. It was rumored that Stalin blamed his son for surrendering, but despite their personal relationship, Yakov was awarded the Order of the Red Banner for his actions at Smolensk. The Germans would later attempt to trade him for a German officer held by the Soviets, Field Marshal Friedrich von Paulus, who had recently surrendered at Stalingrad. It is said that Stalin adamantly refused the proposal, arguing that it was a ludicrous idea to trade a field marshal for an ordinary soldier. Meanwhile, very little information was obtained from the prisoner, who was held in a villa in Berlin. 
Joseph Goebbels tried to use him in radio propaganda broadcasts, but the plan failed as Yakov's nerves had deteriorated. He was constantly harassed by visitors who wanted to meet and photograph him, and Yakov would usually quarrel with British prisoners. After being held in different officers' camps, he was eventually transferred to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, which he would never leave. Yakov passed away on the evening of April 14, 1943. When the war ended, British officers found German archives indicating the 36-year-old attempted to flee and ran into an electric fence after arguing with the British prisoners. He was then shot, but an autopsy showed he died from electrocution. Still, this information was not shared with the Soviets, because neither the British nor the Americans had informed their former allies of the capture of such documents. Decades later, Yakov was bestowed with the Order of the Patriotic War first class, but it was done in secret, and his family could not collect the medal. According to several sources, upon hearing of Yakov's death, Stalin stared at his photograph, then softened his stance towards his son and admitted that he was, quote, a real man whom fate had treated unjustly. Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a like and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't miss out on all our Dark Documentaries channels for more stories from the World Wars. Stay tuned.